signs of the times go, this is a sure sign of winter in cold regions. The expense caused by frost-damaged pavements affects personal, municipal, state, and federal budgets. Suspension jarring bumps, humps, cracks, collapsed pavements, potholes, and upset posts are all caused either directly or indirectly by frost action in the base course or subsoil. The recipe for frost formation in soils includes three primary ingredients, freezing temperatures, frost susceptible soils, and available groundwater near the surface of the soil. As ambient temperatures remain below freezing, the pavement and the material beneath begin to freeze from the surface down. Ice forms in characteristic shapes called lenses. As the water near the surface is frozen into ice lenses, more water is drawn up to replace it and is in turn frozen. This forming ice expands with tremendous pressure. Since the only direction the ice can push is upward, it lifts the pavement. This deformation causes bumps and cracks in the road surface. In the springtime, as this ice melts from the top down, the water cannot drain through the frozen soil below. There is more water present than the thawed soil can hold. This supersaturation destroys the stability of the base course, reducing its capacity to support the pavement. Traffic loads then break down the poorly supported pavement. In order to construct roads which resist these forces, a better understanding of frost action in soils was needed. Valuable insight was gained under controlled laboratory conditions at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Cold Regions Research and Engineering Laboratory in Hanover, New Hampshire. In one of the lab's cold rooms, an apparatus was built to simulate the conditions of seasonal freeze-thaw cycles in pavements. The apparatus consists of a clear plastic cylinder containing a soil specimen. At the base of the cylinder is a porous stone through which water is constantly supplied from a reservoir. A lead weight equivalent to six inches of pavement or base course material is placed on top of the specimen. Two linear scales are used to measure the amount of heave. One was fixed to the cylinder, and the other was fixed to the weight and was free to move upward with it. To provide the temperatures required, the specimen was placed in a freezing cabinet. An insulated window in front of the cabinet permitted observation of the specimen. Granulated cork insulated the cylinder so that only its top was exposed to freezing temperatures. The bottom of the cabinet was heavy mesh so that the bottom of the specimen would be exposed to the constant 38 degree temperature of the laboratory cold room. This setup provided the natural condition of the soil freezing from the top down. The temperature was controlled so that the specimen would freeze at a slow rate, approximately one quarter of an inch of depth per day. To observe this slow process, a time-lapse motion picture camera was used. One frame was exposed every four minutes. A flash unit was synchronized with each exposure to illuminate the specimen. When projected at normal speed, 24 frames per second, the activity of several weeks is seen in several minutes. Here is the film. Ice lenses are forming in the specimen. The freezing front is on the line where ice lenses can first be observed forming. The scale attached to the weight on top of the specimen begins moving upward almost immediately, indicating that heaving is taking place. This soil is New Hampshire silt, a soil susceptible to frost action. Its initial water content was 19%, almost as much water as the unfrozen soil could hold. The watch records the time of each exposure for later detailed study of any particular frame. One second equals about one and one-half hours of actual observed time. The camera was repositioned as the freezing front neared the bottom of the specimen. The heaving observed is entirely due to the thickness of ice frozen in the soil.
the water content of the soil, 19% before freezing, became 55% when the freezing was complete. The 6-inch specimen increased to 10 inches in height, a total heaving of 4 inches. This is nearly 70% of the initial specimen height. The lenses in this specimen were fairly small and uniform in size. In other samples, larger lenses were observed. Here, two ice lenses extend all the way across the specimen. The larger lens is three quarters of an inch thick. In nature, lenses several inches thick have been observed. During thawing, all of the excess water drawn into the soil during freezing must be drained away to retain the soil stability. Every spring, there is an abundance of water in and above the ground. Excess water causes this kind of damage. On this otherwise dry road, excess water in the base course and subgrade, with the help of the traffic load, has caused these potholes to develop. Excess water reduced the support capabilities of the subgrade. Traffic pressure broke down the pavement. Another type of road damage caused directly by frost action is the heaving of this large rock from the subsoil through the base course and then through the pavement, a convincing demonstration of the power of frost action. In simulating this situation in our laboratory, we buried this artificially colored rock in New Hampshire silt. As the freezing front reaches the rock, it lifts the soil away, leaving a void. The freezing front penetrates faster around the rock because of differences in thermal properties of the rock and the surrounding soil. The rock is lifted as soon as the force exerted on it by the freezing soil is greater than the holding force of the unfrozen soil the rock now rises with the heaving soil. A large void develops below the heaving rock. This is filled with ice during the freezing and partially filled with soil bulging in at the sides during thawing. In this demonstration, the rock is raised about three inches by the heaving action. A problem similar to that of the heaving rock is observed with piles set in soil which freezes. Foundation piles, utility poles, and fence posts can all be lifted by frost action if not set deeply enough below freezing depth or anchored to prevent heaving. Wood dowels are used to simulate actual piles. A void appears beneath the larger pile as it begins to lift. The small pile begins to lift. The void beneath the larger pile fills with water, which softens the walls so that they bulge inward. Research on frost action has taught us some valuable lessons, which are now being applied to the design and construction of roadways, runways, and foundations. For example, we now understand the importance of constructing base courses of clean, free-draining, non-frost susceptible materials. This base course must be thick enough so that the pressure of heaving in the soil below will be spread uniformly and the pavement will thus lift evenly without bulging and cracking. The excess water released by melting ice lenses must be permitted to drain upward into the clean porous base and then flow laterally to drains. The thickness of the base must also be sufficient to distribute traffic loads widely over subsoil weakened by excess water so that its support capacity is not exceeded. Frost action no longer needs to be a major cause of pavement failure. When roads are constructed with the potential effects of frost action in mind, long-term, year-round stability can be expected. Laboratory-derived understanding of frost action in soils has contributed significantly to successful airfield design and construction. Runways for both civilian and military aircraft have been constructed to accommodate progressively larger and heavier loads with full seasonal stability. Arctic regions continue to be important for the military. 
A clear understanding of freezing phenomena is therefore vital to efficient defense operations. For over 30 years, the U.S. Army Cold Regions Research and Engineering Laboratory has been providing answers for both civilian and military challenges to working and living in cold climates.